T.S. Turner was a city smart kid fighting his way off the street until he was framed for a crime he didn't commit. Amy Taylor was a young crusading lawyer. She mounted an appeal to put Turner back on the street, this time in a suit and tie, working as a private detective. Together, they are TNT. After spending a lonely night in the county jail, 16-year-old Joseph Casper is being arraigned this morning on charges of first-degree murder for his part in the bombing that killed his own mother, Audrey Casper. He stands before Judge Ingrid Ball, a proponent of law and order here in the county, and is being defended by Amy Taylor, a very well-known person. Here she is now. Let's see if we can get an interview. Did he say why he did it, Counselor? No comment. Did he hate his mother? What kind of question is that? Well, under the circumstances, ma'am, I'd say it's a pretty legitimate one. Brother, if I was you, I'd check out the circumstances a little closer. Uh, thank you, sir. You have been charged with negligence in the use of an explosive, causing injury with intent, and first-degree murder. Do you realize the gravity of these charges, Mr. Casper? Young man! Yes, Your Honor. How did your client intend to plead, Counselor? Joe pleads not guilty, Your Honor. We intend to prove that although he was in the community center last night, he had nothing to do with the tragic bombing that killed his mother. You are remanded to the Newton Maximum Security Facility. Your Honor, my client is 16 years old. The evidence linking him with this crime is at best circumstantial. I would like to suggest an alternative to incarceration. Proceed, Counselor. The foster home run by my associate's aunt, Martha Robinson, has been used on several occasions for young offenders. What about the bond? Your Honor, I'm willing to post a bond. Fifty thousand dollars, Mr. Turner. My associate and his aunt are prepared to put their house up, Your Honor. Yeah, Your Honor, I feel that society would best be served by this young man's incarceration. Your Honor, this boy has never been in court before. I'm sorry, Counselor. I agree that this boy needs special care. Your Honor, uh, if I may address the court, I would like to propose another alternative. Proceed, Dr. Hamill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as you are perhaps aware, the Hamill Foundation operates both a clinic and a summer camp that uh, is uniquely designed to accommodate the needs of serious young offenders. Judge, excuse me. We're all aware of Dr. Hamill's reputation, but uh, I feel that he's no more qualified than Mr. Turner to take care of this young man's problems. I'm not interested in how you feel. I'm satisfied that Dr. Hamill can adequately provide for this boy. Bail granted in the terms discussed. Bailiff. Call in the next case. This boy deserves a chance, a second chance. I propose to give him that chance. Thank you, gentlemen. Come on, Joe. Thank you, doctor. Counselor, can we get a comment, please? Come on, Martha. I got things to do. I'll be a bit bold. Excuse me. Any comment, counselor? No comment. How about you wrap it up, Bill? I'll catch you back at the station. Can I buy you lunch? No. Any idea who really planted the bomb, then? I know who didn't do it. You know, maybe we could work together on this. What do you say? I don't think so, Desmond. Well, you've got a boy's life to save, and uh, I might have answers to questions you haven't even asked yourself yet. Look, will you at least uh, think about it? I'll call you later.
spread out! Harassment. Uh, ladies, can I talk to you? Uh, look, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where'd you get that bruise on your neck? Who did that to you? Well, you know, these guys picked us up. What guys? We got in the car and started beating up on us. Yeah, have you ever seen them before? It's my hand and bruise here. Listen, who were these guys? Have you ever seen them before? Just some tough guys. Futures? <laughs> were they with a gang called the Futures? Well, uh, future. Hungry? What is this? The future. It's pretty bleak, huh? Isn't that the gang that Joe runs with? You got it. A dozen or so vandalizations, four or five beatings, drug addict and prostitute harassment, abduction, always getting bigger and better. And now the bombing. Mm -hmm. It's quite a plot line. Yeah, all this from a blue-collar street gang. I mean, really, they're just a bunch of angry kids. It doesn't make sense. It's too organized. I mean, there has to be somebody guiding. What do you mean? I'm like a director, someone who's paying these hoodlums to break up the neighborhood. Since this group of players moved into the East End six months ago, 37 houses have been sold. Blockbusting? Uh-huh. That's a little far-fetched, isn't it? Really? Is it? Move over. I'm gonna show you the future.
Well, why don't you and Sally come over for a barbecue tomorrow? Oh, it looks like we got ourselves a little crime in progress. Freeze! Can I at least get off the piss? I said freeze! to take the cuffs off, but you're gonna have to tell me what happened to you. Already told you I fell down some stairs. Oh, no. Gee, that's too bad. You know, trespassing can be a very serious offense. I've been working double shifts already, okay? If you need them, you need them. Send the papers up. I get the impression that our friend isn't going to be very helpful. Life is tough all over. Yeah, for you it's gonna get a lot tougher. Those kids didn't plant that bomb. How do you know that? Because my client told me. Mind if I join the party, gentlemen? I wondered how long it would take you to show up. You OK, T.S.? I'm OK. What's going on? We're just asking your partner a few friendly questions. What are the charges? We're considering trespassing and uh, break and enter. Oh, and don't forget the destruction of property and withholding information. I see. Well, while you gentlemen make up your minds, why don't you take the cuffs off? All we want is a little cooperation, that's all. We're all on the same side. I'm on my client's side. That puts you on the wrong side. That's a matter of opinion, Detective. You're a very lucky boy, Turner. I'm starting to enjoy this. Ah! Whoa, whoa, T.S. I'll take the keys. Let's go. Sorry to ruin your evening. We'll give them jobs, some sense of uh, dignity and purpose. Right, Tina? Yes, Dr. Hannah. <laughs> who knows, maybe even some hope for the future. Yeah, slave labor. Well, how are my galley slaves today? <laughs> Fine. Great, Dr. Hannah. <laughs> Actually, they can come and go as they please, and uh, we even give these slaves an allowance. Fine. Come on. Hey, you see how brainwashed this is? Joey can do. He didn't come back to play basketball. Look out! Shoot it up there. Watch that track. Or to uh, take a few classes. Sometimes just to say hello. Some of them even come to my camp in the summertime. That's what we're going to go later. Oh, nice yeah. drum shot. for you, the little lady with the gun. They told me she was an old hooker. Well, I don't know what they told you, but I do know she's willing to drop the charges against you. You tell me who the leaders of the gang are. I'm not a squealer. I know you're not, Joe. I just want you to know the type of things your friends are into. They're cleaning up the neighborhood. They may have started out that way, but they ended up harassing innocent people like Clara Bowman. Well, some of them didn't belong there. Oh, I see. So tell me, Joe, how do you and your gang decide who belongs? Is it the color of their eyes? The color of their hair? Or is it the color of their skin? See, Joe, the point I'm trying to make is that in this country, you can't say who belongs and who doesn't just by looking at them. You're just doing what we thought was right. I understand, Joe. It's not your fault. It's not the fault of the game. Somebody was just paying you guys to scare everybody out the neighborhood. I don't know anything about that. I believe you, Joe, but you gotta help me. You must have seen something. What about a guy driving a pickup truck? I don't know who drives it. Only Stark knows that. Is he the leader? What can you tell me about him? He drives a motorcycle. What kind? A Harley. 
Harley. Hmm. Hey, Joe. I haven't forgotten the promise I made to you on the bridge the other night. Caliber. Turner, big boy. What's going on, brother? <laughs> Just the everyday problems of your typical businessman. Man, I thought I was in the wrong place. Where's all the hogs? There's more money in rice burners, T.S. Less work, too. I can dig it. Follow me. Of course, uh, nothing rides like a Harley. Yeah. Tell me, anybody else around here still rat them? You know the code of a hog dealer. Closed mouth, open palm. Of course, for a brother, it could be the other way around. I assume this isn't a social call. Who or what are you looking for? Some new street gang in the neighborhood calls themselves the future. They lead a riot to Harley. You mean Starkey? You know him? I know nothing he could do would surprise me. How about murder? What do you say we go out and kick over a couple of rocks? I like that. How about Tell me a story on the way. All right. Stay in the living room, and she'll be okay. I'm not your wife. Yes, but you will be for the next half hour. <laughs> Longest half hour I'll ever spend. <laughs> and I'll enjoy every minute of it. That must be the real estate woman. Okay, you ready? Uh, yeah, happy uh, hey, tape. how's this? Oh, it's fine. Not coming off? No, let's Good. go. Let's do it. Clara Bowman, Linda Wallowich, Metro County Real Estate. I thought I asked you not to put a sign up. I can't wait all day, Ms. Wallowitz. You're half an hour late. Actually, I was thinking of a window with postmodern casings. What do you think? Oh, really? Mm-hmm. You know what that means, darling. Yes, I know. Vertical, Vertical blinds. blinds. <laughs> Excuse me. And on this one, I thought perhaps we could knock the whole thing out. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Do a sort of an open concept kitchen thing. Yes, yes, let's consider that. It would be good. And in the cathedral Who ceiling... Who are these people? Let's just Mr. have a Thompson look at the figures. and his lovely wife, Yvonne. They just bought the joint. Hey, what? I thought we had a deal. Oh, you made a verbal offer. They put it in writing. My principal is prepared to offer you $150,000 in cash. $175,000. Well, I think we have the right to make a counter offer. Uh, just wait one minute, Miss. Um... No, you wait a minute, Mr. Thompson. This doesn't close until midnight. My client has until then to better your offer. Darling, just as long as he puts it in writing. Now, Mrs. Bowman, we had a deal. I'm sorry, sport. Business is business. I'd like to talk to your buyer. Well, he prefers to remain anonymous. I don't believe this. I suggest you get him on the horn. Do you have a private phone I could use? In the kitchen. Excuse Mrs. me. Mrs. Bowman? Darling? What? Well, if you're not prepared to do something about this, I certainly am. I don't know who you're working for, but let me assure you, we will not be pushed around like now, this. Now, now, Yvonne, just let her finish her call, then we'll make over. You promise? Yes, absolutely. Now, come on, sweetheart. It's all yours. Securities. If this concerns the sale. 